Hello, and welcome to another one of my past paper walkthroughs, where I'll be going through the 2020 past paper for the IGCSE Computer Science Paper 2 Application of Computational Thinking. But before I do, please remember to hit that like button on this video, subscribe to my channel if you haven't, and to share it far and wide. So without further ado, I'm going to go into walk through with you the 2020 past paper for the I GCSE Computer Science for the NXL exam board. So we need to answer all the questions and answer questions that require written answer in the spaces provided. And, and when we do the coding, we're obviously typing it in. So we're only to use one programming language. So in this case, we're going to do Python. Other centers may do C sharp or Java. So the number of marks is out of 80. And without further ado, we need to use one programming language throughout this examination. In this case, it's going to be Python, so we would just cross out Python. And let's get started. Computer programs make use of many programming constructs. Identify which one of these is not an arithmetic operator? Process elimination. Modulus is an arithmetic operator. Divide is arithmetic. Add is arithmetic. So equals is not arithmetic. B, state the values used by the Boolean data type. So Boolean it will be true and false or zero and one. But in this case, I would say true and false because that's technically more accurate. We're straight into C. Open Q01C in the code editor. So the program should multiply two integers, and there are three errors in the code, and we go amend the code to correct those errors. So for every correction we for every correction we make, we'll get us one mark. So obviously there's three corrections. So this is the code, which I'm gonna bring in here. So we've got num1, 25, num2, 36, num3 is num1 times num2. So you can say we've spotted some mistakes there. Num2, it needs to be one letter for a variable. That's one error. Num3 equals num1. So that's lowercase when that needs to be uppercase like this one. So we just do a capital O. In Python, we don't literally say display. We say print, which will display. So when we run it, there's our answer. So that's all three errors corrected. And that would get us three marks. So we'll clear this up. And we'll move on to the next bit. State what is meant by the term variable. So it's basically data that is stored. Or we could say you know, data store whose constants change whilst the program's executing. That would get you one mark. Or we could say instead a container used to store data. Or we could say a value that a symbolic name associated with a value that may be changed. So any of the one of these will get you one mark. Nice and easy one there. Now for question 01E. So we've got a program that calculates a set sum of a set of numbers. So we need Q01E. So let's bone that code in there. So Let's see what it's doing. So it's adding up all of these numbers together. So because sum is whatever's added. Okay. So we're going to identify the line where line numbers Identify the line number where the code includes a logical operator. 
So that'll be and or and not. So that, in this case, is line six. Line six is where we want to be. Identify the line number where the subprogram definition starts. So it's line three. That's where it starts. Then we want to identify the name of a numeric variable. So amount is numeric, and that's equal to zero. And then we want to identify the name of a string variable. So message is the string variable right there. So let's have a look to see what we have. Yep, nice, easy stuff there. Nice and easy. And that would get us 10 marks. Number two, Rama wants some computer programs for his daughter, Ayomi. So Rama wants a program to calculate the area of a triangle. Area of a triangle is half times base times the height. So this is the pseudocode that will contain the logic to create that program. So what we need to do, we need to write the program to implement logic in that pseudocode. So we need to get QO2A. That's the file we need. So just bring it in here. So what do we need to do? So this is so we have to implement the logic of the pseudocode. And that's it. And no more. So let's have a look. So initializing the variables. So base equals 50. Height check is true. That's what we got so far. Now we need a prompt to take the input from the user. So we are going to do while height check. So while height check. So what we're going to do, we're going to ask him to enter the height between 1 and 100. So we're going to do int. So we're going to do, we're going to do height equals int input. Enter the height between 1 and 100. So if height is greater than or equal to 1 and height is less than or equal to 100, we're going to do height check is equal to false. And then we're going to end the if and the while. And what we're going to do here is we're going to set area to 0.5 times the base times the height. And then what we're going to do, we're going to print base of triangle is. And we're going to say base. Then we're going to say print height of triangle is. Then we're going to say height. So we've got the base and the height. And then what we're going to have, we're going to say area of triangle is area. So let's say we're going to enter a zero. Can't do that. 122, can't do it. So I'm going to enter 55. So the base is 50, height is 55, giving us 1375. 
Let's say I wanted to try another number like 2. Okay, so 2 is 100, divided by 2 is 50. So we've implemented, successfully implemented that logic of that, of this, of this pseudocode. B. Aomi wants a program that will calculate the number of fence panels required to surround the building sites like the one shown here. So this one isn't drawn to scale. So each building site is a rectangle. Each fence panel is one meter long. A gap of four meters is needed to access each site. The location of the gap is not significant. The user will input the length and width of the building site as a whole number of meters. The program will output the minimum number of full panels needed. So QO2B, that provides the structure of the program. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make sure that is saved. So I'm going to make sure that's saved first, so I can always come back to it. So I'm going to get rid of that, and we're going to put O2B in there. OK. So we're going to write the program using the structure given. So how to do that? So each fence is one meter. Gap is four meters. So, what we might have to do is set initial values of variables. So, we could have we're going to have fence panel. Set that to one. We could have gap length is four. So location at the gap is not significant. So we need to say So enter the length of the fence panel. Then we're going to do gap length. Enter the length of gap. And then calculate the number. So, so the access point is the gap. So this is a code we could have, but that's not necessarily what we have to do. So what we would need to do is you don't actually need these. You could just, you don't need an initial values for variables, which we're not going to need. So instead, you could have a variable called length and then the width. And then what we're going to have is we're going to have panels equals two times length plus two times the width. And we're going to take four from that because there's four sides in a rectangle. And then what we're going to do, we're going to print number of panels needed. And then we're just going to say panels. So let's run it. So I'm going to enter. So the fence panel is one and the gap is four. So the number of panels needed will be six. Let's try two and let's try eight. It's going to be 16 and so on. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is how 
that works. So that is what we got there. So that's how that works. So that's that one. What is the next one? There aren't any more programming ones for a while. But there is stuff on encryption. So, several encryption algorithms have been developed. State one is meant by the term encryption. Encryption is turning plain text into ciphertext. B, give one reason why data need, may need to be encrypted. Reason why it needs to be encrypted is so we don't, it's basically making sure only the intended, the intended receiver can read the message. Yep, so conversion plain text into cipher, that'd be one mark. And I've pretty much said to ensure that data can be read by an unauth by an authorized person. Let's try this one. So this one, this one is asking you to perform a rail fence cipher algorithm of the text computational using a key of four. So in a question like this, it's four marks and we need to show our work in to get the encrypted text. So how they would do that, you would, you would, in a question like that, you would get one mark for four lines of text, one mark for a zigzag arrangement of the letters, and then, <coughs> and then one mark for letters of each line reproduced, and there's a consistent use of key four. So, so this, is the correct response. We've got Cal, Otter, Moin, Po, Po, Moin, Otter, Cal. So we're going Cal to Po and then Po to Cal, basically reverse order. Okay. Or another way of putting it. And that other way is let's say I've got a PowerPoint like this. So I need to perform a rail fence cipher doing this. So what I can do, I'm going to insert the table and I'm going to do, and I need to do 13 columns, four rows. And I need to spell out the word computational. So I'm going to do C, O, M P P U T Shan No So computation No, my bad, so it's actually U down here A up here T down here, we bring the I down, then the O down here, then the N, N goes up here, then the A goes here, and we got L. So we've got Cal as the first line. Then the second line, we've got O T T A. Third line, we've got M U I N. And then we've got PO on the fourth line. So that's doing the rail fence cipher. And if we want to go back up, it would be four, three, two, then one. Okay. So that is us showing the working on how to do the rail fence cipher of the encryption text computational. Let's try another one. So we need to explain why the rail fence cipher is a weak encryption algorithm. So it's weak. It's a weak encryption algorithm because there's a limited number of usable keys. That would be one mark. 
And then we could say, so it can easily be decoded by trial and error. So you can say limited number of user keys and easy to use brute force to crack. So those two points would get you two marks. Okay. That's why it's a weak algorithm, encryption algorithm. All right. Back to the programming. So let's close this. And let's get back onto this. Okay. So next one is this question, this big question here. So this is supposed to be a big question. Why that's a finished one, I don't. But let's have a look at it. Gianluca is a school teacher. He's in charge of a year group of pupils. He started to create a program to analyze test results. So hence we've got Q04A in the code editor. We need to amend the code to complete the if statement used to produce these outputs as described in the table. Okay? So these are the inputs. These are the conditions. And these are the corresponding outputs. Okay, so this is the corresponding outputs. So let's have a look at how this code is going to work. So we've got a lot of if statements going on here. So these are the if statements we need to fiddle with. So now, so if English is less than 40, and maths is less than 50. Then we may need to do message index being a zero, saying that a student has failed both. And if we may need to say English is less than 40, or maths is less than 50, student has failed the one. And if, if English is greater than or equal to 80 and maths is greater than or equal to 85 message is going to be 2 and then else message index is going to be a 3 okay so this is what we have so we filled those in Let's run it, and we can see, oh, wow, some have failed. So Kevin Horney passed both tests. Tony Tyson failed one test. David Smith failed both. Don Alexander, student passed both with distinction. So that is that for 4 Q A. Q04A. And now we want to do B, where Gianluca is starting to create a program. But before I do that, I'm going to save that somewhere first. Just to be sure. So Q04A. Then I'm going to do Q. O for B. That's that fine. Just want to make sure that's there. Because what we will need is we need the structure in Q04B to do this. So let's get Q04B. So we've got QO4B. So this is where we need to write. So Gianluca has started to create a program to analyze pupil attendance. He wants a menu system with subprograms. So we've got QO4B. So the program must include subprograms too, displaying the names of students whose percentage attendance was less than 75%. 
the accountant displayed the number of students whose percentage attendance was 90% or higher. So it's 13, so this is six marks. If you get one right, you'll get one, you'll get some marks, not necessarily all of it. So we need to display the names of students whose percentage whose percentage is less than 75. So let's do menu option one. So it's going to be deaf low attendance. And we don't need parameters, so we don't need to worry. 4x in range. It will be len pupil attendance. And then in here, it's going to be if pupil attendance. So it's going to be x minus 1. Minus one and then two, less than 75. We're going to print pupil attendance x minus one, and then we're going to have zero zero, which is going to be then we have a dot. Pupil attendance, it's going to be x minus 1, then 1. And that will be it. And then outside, then outside the for loop, we're just going to have to return. And we leave it at that. Next subroutine is going to be, we need high attendance. Again, no parameters. So we're going to have count equals naught because we're going to increment. And we're going to have 4x in range. And we're going to have len pupil attendance. Pupil att attendance. So we're on the atten pupil attendance. So 4i in range is pupil attendance. Always do the colon. So that's our syntax. Then we're going to have if pupil attendance is greater than or equal to 90. So one that's equal to 90. We are going to do count. plus equals one increment account. And then outside the for loop, we are going to return count. So we've got the two subroutines done for those two options. Now we need to go down and complete these if statements. So if option is equal to one, we're going to call low attendance. Option two, we're going to call high attendance. And then a program. So there were, but in this one, in number two, we need to say specifically there were high at. So what we should have had was high at equal that to high to high attendance, where we're calling it. Then we're going to say high attendance or attenders. Then that should be it with the code. Spain option, I'm going to display one low attendance. So we've got the low attending kids. Option two. There were seven high attenders. And say I wanted to do number three, just to see. Program's complete, so we don't need to do any more there. I could do more where we could output the list of pupils, the high attenders, but that's not what 
they're looking for in this program. So they're not looking for that at all. So we're just going to save that. So I'm just going to save that somewhere as they're not looking for it. So we can just move on. So QO4B, that's that. So we haven't got any more programming ones for the time being. Five. Keris Jones is the manager of, of a shop that sells electrical goods. She's creating a stock control program and each item of stock will have a 10 character code. Each code has three parts. One to three characters are uppercase letters. Four to nine, they're numbers between one and nine and they're inclusive. Then character 10 is an E on O, indicating whether the sum of numbers is even or odd. So all the codes have to be validated. And we need to complete the table to show two additional validation tests. For each test, give one example of error in this data. The example that you, that you give should fail just the one test. <coughs> so let's say I could do one where it's all numbers. So I could say, is it? Are there letters as well as numbers? So just do error in the state not all numbers. Say it needs to have all numbers. For this one, we're going to have all uppercase and numbers, no lowercase for error in the data, and say that we need it. It's always worth checking the mark scheme just to see what they say as well. So characters four and nine, non zero numbers. Could have one that consists of only 10 characters. <coughs> And the final character, correct for the sum of numbers. So those are the things that the marks keep the same as well. So in that one, they all award one mark for each appropriate validation, up to two, and one mark for a suitable example of error in this data that matches that particular test. <laughs> and now we've got, Keras will need an algorithm to search the table of stock data. We need to state two advantages of using linear search algorithm rather than a binary search algorithm. So two advantages of a linear search over a binary search. So it's a simple implementation and it can be sorted, they can be used for sorted or unsorted lists. So those are the two advantages of a linear search. They will accept disadvantages of a binary search, but they would rather have you answer the question, say, the advantages of a linear search. OK. And then we got state two disadvantages of using linear search algorithm rather than a binary search. So again, let's see what the mark scheme has to say. So you may need, may need a longer time for search searching a large list and you may need to compare with all the items in the list before the search is complete. So those are the ones that they would like you to have. But they will accept advantages of a binary search compared with a linear search in this case. Then what have we got? So Keras will use functions and procedures in the program. One similarity between the function and the procedure is that they're both subprograms. State two similarities. One is you can use local variables in both of them. So that's one. And two, you can reuse different part you can reuse code for different parts of the program, whether it be a procedure or a function. For C part two, explain one difference between function and a procedure and that's worth two marks. So difference between a function and a procedure. So a function must always return a result so that would be one mark whereas a procedure doesn't have to return a result. Or we could also have a function produces information whereas a procedure performs a task. So any two out of here will get you two marks. 
this is literally copy and paste the mark scheme. And that's our 12 marks there. Last but not least, question six. So this is the big beast. But first, let's get Q06 and see what they have today. See what they have in this question. Big bit of code, so you can see it's, they are 2D lists. And this is where we write the code below. So Farsha is a regional manager for an insurance company. She manages a team of sales staff, and she wants a program to analyze performance of a team over a number of months. So the test data is in the code. So we've got Q06. Now we need to write a program to calculate and display the total sales made by each member of the team. Calculate and display the total sales by the whole team and display the first name, last name, and the total sales made by, made by two members of the team with the highest total sales. You don't need the possibility of two or more members of the team having the same total sales. Your program needs to function correctly even if the number of months or number of members of the team is changed. So that's all you need to do there. So, how are we going to do this? Well, you would have all, so all staff, all staff total is equal to naught. Then you'd have highest sales, naught, second sales equal to naught. Then you'd have high and second, both equal to naught. So what we need is we need a print statement saying sales for each member of staff. And that's what we need there. Then we're going to have four staff in staff sales. Staff total is zero. Sales is three. While sales is less than nine. Staff total is equal to staff total plus staff sales. Then we're going to have sales equals sales plus one. Then we're going to have a print statement, which will have staff. And then index that to one. Dot staff. Index that to two. And then we're going to have staff total. And then we're going to have if staff total is greater than second sales. We're going to have, so if staff total, is that, and then we're going to have another if, if staff total is greater than highest sales. And then what we're going to have is highest sales equals staff total. And I'm going to have high equals staff. Else, second sales equals staff total. And I'm going to have second equals staff. And we're going to go outside that nested if statement, and we're going to have all, all staff total, all staff total, plus staff total. Done. We're going to have total number. So we're going to have a print statement, which goes outside of that for loop, and we're going to have print 
I'm going to have something like backslash n backslash n total sales for all staff. We're going to have all staff total. So that's it. I'm going to have print highest sales by. Then we're going to have high one and high high one. High two. Then we're going to have with highest sales. Then we're going to do another print. We're going to say second highest sales by second one and two with second sales. So I'm going to run that. And there's nothing there. So line 34. Not really callable there. One, second, two. Line 34, which is staff total. Right, because I've done circular normal brackets when it should have been square. So I'm going to run that again. Line 36, so staff total. So I've got staff two, staff one. Staff total so print staff one right I put I should have put in a comma and not a full stop so I got one with one of the sales so now I need to go into 38 so it should be staff total is greater than the higher sales. Run that, and there we go. So that is my highest sales and the second highest sales, and how much they've got, and the total sales by the staff. So this is our question six of that paper. And we've gone through the entire 2020 past paper. And that is it. If you've enjoyed this video, please remember to click that like button on this video and press that subscribe button and share, and share my channel and this video far and wide. And I look forward to making the next video for you very soon. Thank you for watching and goodbye for now.